Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and welcome to the Vehicle Assembly Building where I am going to be doing another one of my recreation videos because hey, they're pretty fun, right? And uh, we have a pretty cool rocket today to uh, to to build. It's actually one of my one of my favorite projects I've done so far. This thing was this thing is a legend. Um, this is the Comet HLLV or the Comet Heavy Launch Vehicle. It's actually a super heavy launch vehicle, but I mean names, right? Uh, this is was designed to be the um, basically the replacement for the Saturn V, uh, and was actually researched by NASA for quite a few years. Um, but it was eventually scrapped um, because, uh, yeah, this never would have worked. Um, it was actually, yeah, it was two years from 1992 to 1993. It was actually researched. But, uh, yeah, first NASA had nowhere near enough money to pull this off. They had some pretty optimistic uh, budget requirements that they uh, were just never going to ever hit. They said the development of this entire rocket would be $4.8 billion. And that, uh, yeah, no, nah, that's not that's not how that works. Um, yeah, I mean, art. let me look at Artemis. It's already way more than that. So, uh, yeah, nice try, NASA. But, uh, yeah, basically the way this thing uh, worked, it used basic, it used Saturn V. It's just a Saturn V-derived launch vehicle. So uh, it has an upper stage and a, an upper stage, which is a translunar injection stage, uh, which is powered by one J2X, J2S, J2XS. I will fact check myself and put a little thing up there. Um, uh, some text on screen here, and then it has a middle stage, which is uh, powered by six J2 same X engines, and I can't actually, no, I have the Wikipedia right here. Uh, yeah, six J2 S's, uh, which is on the uh, middle stage there, um, and that's going to get you into orbit that middle stage, and then you have a bottom stage, which is powered by uh, five F1A engines, and then there are two side boosters, which are powered by two Saturn uh, F1A engines uh, each. The F1A and the J2S are the like the better versions of the J2 and the uh, F1, and the F1 is obviously the you know the big epic engine. Uh, that was uh, that was for the uh, for the Saturn V. Uh, the Mastodon is the equivalent in KSP, and then. Uh, yeah, the J2 is skiff in KSP, so I just uh, did that, and um, yeah, that's basically the rocket. It's pretty crazy. It can theoretically carry, I believe it's 250 tons to uh, to low Earth orbit, uh, and then up to, uh, it says 60 to 90 tons up to TLI. Um, that's just an estimate because obviously we don't exactly have the number because this thing was uh, never built. Uh, to put that in context, the Saturn V could only take, uh, I think it was 140 tons to um, to low Earth orbit and then 41 tons to uh, TLI. So uh, this thing is like double the size basically, double the payload capacity, a little bit less, but you know, you get the idea. This thing is pretty fucking big. And, uh, yeah, so what were they going to use this thing for? Um, they were going to use it as part of the FLO, or First Lunar Outpost. So this thing would be kind of like Artemis is. It, it's kind of like a base on the moon. There was very little information about this, but they did have a lander that they uh, kind of sketched up. And this is what I'm making right now. Uh, the lander was actually quite difficult to make because they used a bunch of, like, those, like, orangey tanks. Um... And yeah, the only orange tanks that you can do is like the baguette, uh, like like the shiny yellowy gold tanks. Gold is a better color. Um, so I, I ended up just using the Mark One 1.25 meter, and they are the wrong color. So yeah, that kind of sucks. You can like clip a bunch of baguettes together, but I really didn't want to have like 5,000 parts in my crap. So yeah, this thing the color isn't exactly accurate. Um, and uh, now it's it's a two stage lander. So that bottom stage is the 1.25s, and then this top stage. Uh, is uh, powered by uh, three engines, three hypergolic engines. I just used Harrier engines. And the bottom stage is powered by four RL-10 engines, which is the Apoodle in KSP. And then on top of that is a command pod, uh, which is a, uh, it's very similar to the Apollo command pod. It was, it's uh, derived from its, uh, according to Wikipedia, or whatever the original source, I'll put sources in the description. Um, it is about five, uh, sorry, 5% 5 bigger than the Apollo command pod and could carry uh, an extra person and 200 kilograms of stuff, basically, um, from the moon, so that you could carry, like, rocks and stuff. This thing had, theoretically, uh, the uh, payload capacity uh, to bring five tons of equipment down to the moon, or the moon, wow, the moon, um, which is nowhere near what the, uh, what the Apollo lander could bring. So this thing could, theoretically, bring, um, 
bring a base if you just uh, swap out that ascent stage. Uh, what I'm going to be bringing, I don't think I actually showed in the build time lapse, but I uh, do put in some uh, the deployable science stuff uh, as my payload uh, to bring down on the descent stage. And I'm just adding some like scaffolding kind of looking stuff to make it look a little bit more, I don't know, realistic. Turns out that's a bad idea because I don't know if you looked at where I attached that to. Um, I definitely attached it to the, uh, the, um, the upper stage, which totally doesn't cause any problems in the future when I try to decouple the ascent stage. Uh, but but yeah, basically that is the lander. I'm just going to cover it up in a fairing. Then we just have to put the launch escape system on. And then it'll be a time to launch. Uh, yeah, so this thing is yeah basically done. And then we're going to obviously go out to the mun and back uh, with it. And try and do a realistic, realistically what we would expect this mission to be. I mean, we don't really know what it would be like. Uh, I, I don't know if they planned on bringing people first. Or building the base first. Or what the deal was. But all I'm doing is just... Uh, it's kind of... I'm doing like a hybrid type of mission. I believe they could bring like they could bring you know payload so uh yeah um hey we're here at the launch welcome to the launch everybody uh this thing is i think it's pretty epic i <laughs> yeah i think this that this thing would have worked i think they could have made it work they totally could have um not on budget probably because it's nasa but hey um they could have made it work uh yeah so throttling up the engines and there we go, heading on up. This thing isn't fully fueled because it is way overbuilt. It would be fully fueled. I mean, it's still overbuilt, but hey, that's just how KSP works. We have our three main Kerbals. Jeb, Bill, and Bob are on this rocket today because they are there being there. I've not done a mission with just the three of them in a long time. I've been using different Kerbals and maybe only one of them, and I have to sneeze right now, and I feel like I might sneeze, but it's going to be one of those times where you like, don't actually sneeze when you think you're going to sneeze, but I'll uh, be talking about on the screen. Uh, the boosters are now running out of fuel as the two side boosters, which means we're going to be four engines less than we had just a second ago, which means a little bit less thrust to rate ratio, but we are still climbing quite nicely, just pitched past 45 degrees, continuing pitching over as that center core with the five F1A engines begins to get low on fuel. That's going to continue to pitch over until until it runs out of fuel, then we're going to be powering up the six. J2S's on the second stage, and there we go, stage separation, and there we go, firing that second stage. Now this stage will get us all the way into orbit, and then that third stage, which is the 1J2S, will get us all the way out to the moon, or the moon. And uh, yeah, that was a very awkward fairing deployment. I finally remembered to do clamshell deploy, and yeah, uh, I, it was epic, because I always forget, and clamshell deploy is so cool. I always do like the weird explosive deployment and there's like 35,000 pieces that looks really stupid and unrealistic. And I finally remembered. And then I forgot to turn off the ejection force, so it just kind of flopped there. So, <laughs> hey, we're getting there slowly. But we are now uh, just about to cross the carbon line. There we go, up past 70 kilometers. I'm flying perfectly flat here just to get as much horizontal velocity as possible. Um, and when I said this stage is going to get us into orbit, I may have actually lied because I'm trying to get as little uh, space debris as possible. Um, on the save because last save I had like 500 this is a new save by the way or a newish save I had like 500 pieces of debris and it was like lag city so yeah just coming to the point of there we go of engine cutoff and yeah yeah so I'm not gonna be doing the circularization burn it's only like 40 meters a second um, so I'm going to be doing that with the translunar injection stage but I just want to get that uh, second stage on a suborbital trajectory so it doesn't get stuck in orbit so yeah, there we do. Just planning out the um, planning out the burn there as we begin to coast on up. They're doing 100 by 100 kilometer orbit just because it's a nice round number, and then we can get our way out to the moon. Uh, this is a very basic lander design. Another reason why this rocket had to be so much bigger than the Saturn V is uh, not only the payload, but this is a direct descent mission, uh, which means that. Um, means that there is no rendezvous that takes place in low in, in the lunar orbit. Uh, so they're like the lander is the same stage as your return stage. So basically, yeah, you need a lot more. You need a lot more rocket. Uh, this this plan is actually somewhat similar. It's it's more ambitious, but it's similar to the UR seven hundred A, which uh, which I did a video on two days ago. So you know, card up there if you want to click on that. Also, guys, um, I don't know. I, I said this in my last video, but I'm like officially monetized now. So that's pretty epic. So thanks to everyone who subscribed and help get watch time and all that stuff so what that means is I have like the community posting stuff which is really cool but I think I can also post links in the little card things so I'm gonna try and do that here in a second um 
you know, to promote the Discord, right? So if, if I actually can post a link, there'll be a link in a card where you can like go to my Discord and you know, pretty epic, right? I can start putting links. Uh, yeah, so uh, Discord, um, we're doing Community Space Station if you don't know, so it'll be, it's basically a thing where everyone builds a module and you can all submit it and I'm gonna make a video. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about that. Um, if you wanna do part of that project, you know, you still have time to join. A few days left uh, to submit stuff, so if you wanna do that, uh, you know, click the card that was there already. Or, yeah, click the card. That was there a few seconds ago, but yeah. We got like over 40 submissions already. I think it's 44 as of yesterday. Um, like, guys. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I made the part limit 100, so I'm gonna have, my computer's just gonna melt. This is, oh boy. This is gonna be one of the most epic videos on the channel, though, if I actually can get it to work. And it, the station's gonna look like, like, a, like a, someone puked in orbit, but I mean, hey. It'll be made by the community, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, we're coming into land now. I'm gonna stop talking about that. Because we are now doing our landing burn, deploying all of those landing legs as we come on down to the surface of the moon. Welcome down. A little bit of a bouncy bouncy, but we have made it. Now, we are going to EVA a Jeb. And he is going to kind of just fall off. In real life, they have a ladder, but this is Kerbal Space Program. Ladders are overrated. Um, they are fake news. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deploy all of the deployable science. Because why would you bring it if you're not going to deploy it? There's a lot of it, actually. <laughs> uh, actually, It's actually quite surprising how long it takes to deploy all the deployable science. Deploy, I've said deploy so many times now. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, quite a bit of stuff. And uh, yeah. Um, this is really cool. I love the deployable science because when 1.11 comes out, it's going to be 1.11 is basically like the Kerbal inventory system update. It's going to be great. We can actually like build stuff on your craft with in your from your Kerbal's inventory and not just deploy. This is like a this is like a, a lame version of it of what 1.11 will be. And I believe the deployable science is a making history. No, sorry, it's a breaking ground DLC thing. So yeah, this is this is kind of like a taste of what it'll be like. And I can't. It's going to be so epic. I'm going to like repair stuff and build it's gonna, it's gonna be epic as Jeb just kind of falls over there uh, but yeah um, that it's I can't wait to start making videos on if you want to you know stay tuned for more videos hit the notification no just you can't hit the notification bell I think I have like I believe it's like every time uh, I make a video I believe like 200 or like 150 people get notified um, and I have a thousand subs so uh, yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad relative to other YouTubers. Uh, but we are now reboarded in the lander, so we are going to, uh, try and, uh, depart from the surface. Oh, boy. Yeah, remember what I said about attaching that scaffolding test stuff? Yeah. Not a good plan. Um, well, that's what quick saves are for, so instead of fixing the problem, well, I mean, I would have had to, like, redo the entire video, or refilm it, I just tried to just try again, and oh, 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 there we go, oh, flippity-flop, flippity-hippity-hoppity, and we're up, yes, this works. Uh, something always has to go wrong in my videos, don't they? Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, I probably got this entire craft wrong. I know for a fact, like, my Ascend stage could look better. I mean, obviously it has a bunch of, like, modular girders in it, but, like, you know, assuming, uh, ignoring that, um, I, not that faithful of a recreation. Um, I mean, I tried my best. The, the, the fuel tanks are kind of awkward. Um, yeah, if I got something wrong in the video, feel free to let me know. That's why I put sources in case I, like, screw something up. Because I'm looking at, like, I can only have so much, I have only have so much screen real estate to kind of, like, have notes on or articles pulled up on. So sometimes I have to just try and remember a fact, and a lot of times I remember said facts wrong. And I have this one guy, he's been commenting like all the stuff I get wrong in most of my videos, so very helpful dude. Thank you, very helpful guy. Um, but we are re-entering now, so yeah, if, if I do something wrong, feel free to comment. Uh, we're now coming down very steep, leaping, but hey, Kerbals are pretty chunky, they can take anything. And now we are through peak heating, through peak G's, and through 10 kilometers as we bring this command pod back into the atmosphere and we can get ready to play our drogue shoot and then we have one of those small parachutes on the top which will bring us down this is the parachute is kind of meant for smaller craft but hey it works on this thing too we do come in a little bit fast there it's just go main shoots deploy and the drogue shoot is cut because we don't need that anymore and there goes the heat shield now it is just us coming down at around 10 meters per second 
And that is going to be the entire mission, assuming these guys land safely, which would uh, be kind of lame if they didn't. Because I really don't want to kill Jeb again. I have killed Jeb so many times. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's see. Will he come in and... a hey, Pretty steep landing surface. I'm actually surprised they didn't, like, start rolling down. But, hey, we did it. That's going to be the end of the video. So, thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Please write a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.